Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome to the Monsters. God damn it! Whoa. I like forgot the name of, of the game for like a second there. That was actually really dumb. Uh, welcome back to another Monster Super League review. Yes, review. Uh, this is a review video, and I got a request to review the July. Um, I've been getting a lot of requests lately. Whenever I make one of these videos, one of the comments below will basically request that I review a, another monster, and then I'll just basically review that monster. I guess I'll just keep keep this chain going on until I eventually cover every single monster in the game. Um, Alright, so the July is a monster that has um, HP leader for a Chaos Tower. This actually is not that useful because Chaos Tower is basically just one level. You don't really... Um, I don't really think you need really good monsters for a Chaos Tower, but it'll definitely help you early on if you happen to have a variant version of her. You can use the HP leader to help you clear through um, the early stages of Chaos Tower, like during the first month, as far as you can um, before you reset. If you're like you know a new player, um, so that's that's still somewhat helpful. Um, she has a normal skill and an AOE skill. This is actually an AOE skill. Um, oh wait, no, is it an AOE skill? Yeah, it's an AoE skill. Um, yes, it's it's an AoE skill. So basically, she has a, um, a HP siphon. Basically, she'll be able to heal back. Um, just that's just some self-sustain. Really, really simple stuff. And also a petrification. Forty percent chance for this to land for one turn. Um, Forty percent is actually a little bit low in my opinion. I don't think it's it's all that high. And I'm not sure what I feel about the fire one. I think she's a, she's an okay unit to use early on, but definitely doesn't really have the the right skill set to make her more useful um, as as the game goes on. So we're gonna take a look at the at the water one. Um, where's the water one? All right, so the water one has a shield breaker and HP siphon. Um, shield breaker, I've heard like they, some people use it against certain bosses that like have shield. I can't remember which golem that has has this. Um, but shield breaker is is some is a little like it's somewhat useful because um, if you're ever fighting monsters with shields, shield gives them immunity, and immunity means that you're not able to um, you're not able to apply any sort of debuffs on that monster. And this is a hundred percent chance. So basically, if you have her attack. That monster first. Um, that monster is going to lose lose his shield, and then you can go with your CC and debuffs and all that stuff afterwards. Um, but I think the the main thing that makes makes her probably a little bit better than her other counterparts is this HP siphon. Um, it doesn't look like much, like five percent. Most people would think it's really really low. Like you know, water purse heals for ten percent on her autos. Like this only heals for five percent on your five star skill. Um, but this is actually different because it's an it's an AOE skill. So um, every for every enemy that it hits, I, I assume that this is going to be the same as the like the water nightmare because I, I use the water nightmare quite a lot, and she has a 10% heal. So basically, um, whenever she does this, and if there's four units, you're essentially healing for 20% of your own max HP for all, all allies, which is pretty good. It's actually not that bad, which makes her like uh, it gives her like a unique skill set as a um, passive healer that can do that can do nukes to um, restore your SP bar, and at the same time heal up your team. You know, so that's that's definitely a, a lot better than. Um, well, that's definitely something unique. All right, unique to to her, and not a lot of other monsters have that. Like no other three star has a skill like that, and the only four star monsters that have similar skills that like heal your your entire team. Um, I think there's only, there's, actually there's a few, there's like the light succubus, which is like pretty rare because she's light and dark. Um, there's there's the wood boltwing, but it's kind of a little bit different, like his heal is based off his, um, his actual damage. And then there's monsters like the water purse or the light cosmo, um, which kind of does the same thing, but it's not an AoE skill, it's like a single target skill. So the only thing I can really compare her to is like the, the fire shiva which has a better version of her skill um, or the the water nightmare which basically has the exact same skill yeah so let's move on to the wood one um, yeah, the wood one's actually the only one I have so the wood one has attack down 60% chance and recovery down for two turns 
Um, this out of all the all of the counterparts has the highest percent chance of landing debuffs, 60% on each. Um, but the, my only problem is the type of debuff. Like attack down is definitely a really really good debuff, but I don't think recovery down is all that useful. Um, especially how in this game recovery down only halves the recovery instead of like you know blocking all recovery. So it's basically really really situational, and recovery down can easily be replaced with like just you know more damage or some shit like that because basically if if they can if they can't out heal your damage you don't really need recovery down anyways um but you can definitely see it as a bonus if you want want to use a wood unit that doesn't ha that has attack down um not a lot of wood units have attack down like she's one of the only wood units that have attack down i mentioned i mentioned this before in one of my um reviews before for i think for the scroll or actually no not the scroll um, I can't remember which which unit. I think it was it was the Mushi or something. Actually, wait, no, it wasn't. It was the box. Yes, it was the box. Um, yeah, the box also has an attack down skill, but only forty percent. There's not a lot of monsters that have attack down on their first skill. Um, the only units that that do have them, I think, are four stars. The Wood Hana, who has it on her first skill, and there's. Well, the Wood Leo has it on his second skill as an AoE, um, but these are like four stars. She's she's a three star. She's like the only, pretty much the the three star with the highest chance, like three star and below with the highest chance of landing attack down on um, her first skill. And also the the Wood Hana only has a sixty percent as well, so it's definitely not it's not even higher than than a four star. So I mean, it's not it's as just as high as a four star. So it's definitely. Um, Definitely something considerable. If you if you're interested in doing that, but I don't think this is a monster you really want to raise for the late game. I don't see a lot of late game potential for the the Julys. That's just my honest opinion. Um, probably out of anything is probably the water one because the the um, the heal on Nuke is actually pretty unique. Like not a lot of monsters have this. The HP siphon that heals allies. I think only like seven or eight monsters within the whole game have have something similar. Um, so that's that's definitely something. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. Um, it's a little bit random because I just I basically review whatever monsters are recommended. Um, so if you def if you have a recommendation, definitely be sure to comment. And if you guys like this video, be sure to like it because it does really really help me a lot. Um, if you do like my videos. So if you've stayed till now, please, please do like my videos. Um, and if you hated my videos for some reason, then you can leave me a dislike. That helps as well. It helps me learn that um, helps me learn that you didn't like my video. All right, that so you can leave me a dislike. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out.